we present the application of Charlie Back's lab for management of distal radius fractures. Authors and disclosures are below. Indications include reduced, undisplaced, minimally displaced or non-volar displaced distal radius fractures. Equipments required include the Charlie slab template, plaster of Paris, padding, crepe, scissors, tape, water, bucket, PPE such as a gown if required and protective sheet over the patient. We're using one packet of the 20 cm plaster of Paris which makes approximately 10 plies and cut it to the template provided. The length of the back slab can be adjusted according to the size of the patient's arm. The next step is to apply padding. We're using the 10 cm size soft bag in this video. We start by making a small hole in the middle for the thumb and then place a thumb through and begin wrapping around the arm with 50% overlap each time to ensure adequate padding. The application should be firm but not tight. The soft band has to cover outside to where the plaster will be so then we can fold it back onto the plaster later. Here is the plaster that we cut to template earlier. We're using cold water as it gives us a longer working time. We dip the plaster into the bucket full of water and then squeeze out any excess. If an assistant is present, ideally the assistant will hold the patient's index and little finger apart during plaster application so that when the plaster sets later on, the fingers are not in a crushed position. This is to ensure adequate movement of the fingers once the cast sets. We apply the plaster onto the radial and dorsal region of the patient's forearm and then smooth out the plaster and fold the excess soft band back onto the plaster. It's important to ensure that the thumb has free movement and the cast does not pass the MCPJ. It should also remain approximately two finger breadth below the elbow crease. There should be an adequate gap volarly without any plaster. To achieve optimal positioning, we mold the plaster to slight ulnar deviation and slight palmar flexion. We then wrap 10 cm size crepe bandaging around the plaster and secure with tape. Now we can mold the plaster further with slight ulnar deviation and apply three point molding. The first point of molding is on the dorsal side proximal to the wrist crease and distal to the fracture. The second point is on the dorsal side proximal to the fracture. And lastly, the third point of molding is on the volar side as the apex, providing a counter force. At the completion of plaster application, ensure the patient has free range of movement of their MCPJ and elbow joint. Also examine their neurovascular status and always do a post-reduction x-ray. Encourage the patient to elevate the injured arm and refer to fracture clinic. If there are any concerns, escalate to the consultant or orthopedic registrar on call.